Hi everybody, it's Christian from Student Education. Going to be doing the four majors for the following week. So that's the end of June through the first week of July. So the 28th of June through to the 3rd of July 2015. And end of end of month, start of a new month, that means one thing, that means non from payroll. Okay, so this week coming up, we've got non from payroll, but we've also got important news uh, relating to Greece. Um, this week coming, uh, the ongoing issue with Greece, and it's still ongoing, tell you what. Um, yeah, now the Greek government has decided to uh, put the vote to the Greek people um, in, in terms of a referendum to see uh, if they would like uh, to continue with uh, further help from the European Union or should they think about leaving to a degree. So... A lot happening with 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 the with Greece and Eurozone, and that has had a significant play on the euro against US dollar. So let's start, let's start with that particular pair. Um, on the monthly, always start with the monthly. Just have a look uh, straight away. I look at my indicator box, and I can see predominantly uh, more red. However, you can see that the monthly sentiment is still one of negativity here. So everything is red, and the R squared is blue, confirming it. Weekly, however, we're starting to see a bit of more positiveness coming through. The linear aggression, the MACD, parabolic SAR are now all below price, supporting price, which is not a really good sign. Daily also looking a bit messed up. And that's predominantly uh, going to start with the, the long-term bias here on the monthly. Look at the all-time high to the current low. So take the current high to the current low. You can see that price right here on the hot right edge of the monthly. You'll notice one thing. You'll notice that price has been consolidated for the best part of one, two, three, four months now. Uh, had a really good start to the year in terms of negativity for January and then Feb, but then March, April, May, and going into June, we've seen no new lows. However, saying that, we've seen price failing at the 38.2 Feb uh, pullback uh, level that I plotted earlier at 1118. So here you can clearly see that there's a genuine line drawn in the sand a major support and resistance level a four month support and resistance level and price happens to be below that we've seen price trading above it but it's closed low on every single occasion over the last four months so clearly a resistance notice that the 20 the 50 and the institution moving average above price clearly confirming further negativity for this particular pair and our indicators for the fx8 are pretty much telling us we should be looking for long-term negative sentiment the arrow is red candlesticks are red the rmo is below and the osmo is clearly below. Yes, it has turned dark red, predominantly because price has failed to make new lows. And ideally, if you're on a long-term negative trend, price has to be making consistent new lows to be therefore back in a negative trend. But what we can see now is some sort of uh, pullback or uh, flag formating now, uh, formating form, form <laughs> forming. However, all below the 118 level. So current issues within Greece hasn't really really boded well uh, we have seen some pullbacks since the march lows however saying that that's got to do with u.s negativity on uh, uh, in uh, uh, yeah u.s negativity instead of euro positiveness so here you can clearly see that price is trading above 38.2 level okay great we've had a pullback over the last week we've, we, we saw prices actually trading higher than this the prior week however we're now trading to back towards that 38.2 level having said that We've now got things happening out this week, uh, the referendum, etc. Like that, that's been left till the, the the first part of July, in fact. But the uncertainty now that lies within Greece uh, has caused a major consolidation, uh, hesitation within the markets, all the global markets, but also very much so in the euro against US dollar. And you can see that price has been quite consolidative over the past couple of months. So, having said that, got to stay above the 38.2 level to then look for potential buying opportunities to the upside going going into the new uh, month of July, in fact. Because you can see that we're not making any new lows. Okay, We haven't made any new lows since March of 2015. And subsequently, we've seen higher highs. Oh, well, swing highs, let's put it that way. We haven't seen any new highs being created in terms of long term, but we have seen swing highs, swing high, swing high, etc. So for price to be now more of a change in trend, we would need to see the February resistance level has been broken which would also be the may 2015 highs being broken and also currently the june resistance level has also been broken so clearly here there's a 
clear support and resistance level here at 1142 and also the fib level so trading above the major fib level but still not making new highs over the last couple or over 2015 in fact so if we do see uh, some sort of um, deal with greece and the creditors within the european union uh, through the ecb and the imf etc and the european commission that would then potentially put more buyers to the upside but until then you're seeing price consolidating and is it worth trading consolidation for me personally not a chance i'd rather give it back i'm waiting for greece to come out with a clear objective everybody's happy with it then we could see a recontinuation of of, of bias whether it be further negativity for the euro or a pullback to see a, a, a new start of a new trend to the upside for 2015 so be it but i need to see clear confirmation from the market and currently i just don't see anything happening at the moment so i'm rather standing aside waiting for the market to give me that that that, that clear objective and then i'm going to trade it so here consolidative i've drawn a support and resistance level trigger level above this 1142 myself having said that i've also put a support and resistance line at the prior swing high which was back here in early may around about that 1095 level got to clearly see a break close lower than that that's going to be breaking this intermediate swing up which we then see a recontinuation of the negative trend and then we could look towards those march lows as our first potential target having said that further highs got to break this 114277 level and then we can see price moving towards a 50 pair moving average to start with but ultimately back towards that 50 percent for retracement here at the 121069 and change on to sterling here again seeing a lot of consolidation here in the monthly time frame you can see going into 2015 you saw a bit of negativity uh, through january in fact pause in february and then a continuation in march but no further continuations of the march low through um, march april may uh, going into june a, a, a greater pullback has clearly been the case here for this particular pair so if you want to see what what, what price is likely to do here we can take the current low of 2015 to the current high that we saw in 2014 in fact you can see the fib retracement level here at the 78.6 and the 76.4 level now put those two on 78.6 is more of a fib level 76.4 isn't but the people seem to use it i like to just keep it on there so it gives me a real confirmation uh, we saw a break higher heading into that 61.8 fib retracement level through last month's trading having said that failed to actually close higher this month we've seen price consolidating at the 70.6 and then a lot of positive growth for sterling against the us dollar over the month of june and that's taken us clearly above the 61.8 and into the 50 percent retracement level which also happens to be the 20 period moving average as well as the 50 period moving average on our monthly so here again the bias long term has been negative but you'll notice that we're starting to see a lot more positive is coming through especially through the the, the smaller time frames aging its way through the the four hour the day the weekly etc as we fail to see any further negative sentiment as we would expect to see on the long-term sentiment so no new lows since march so therefore more bias coming in for the bulls and that has pushed price up over the last three consecutive months dropping down to the weekly you can see that price now is trading by the 20 the 50 but clearly having an issue with the institution moving average which happens to be the 50 percent fib retracement level that i uh, drew on the chart earlier so here if we are to see any further bias to the upside would need to see a daily counter close this current this this new week proceeding going to july to close higher than the 50 percent retracement yet 1588 and change to then look at a likely target being the 38.2 level at 169 sorry 1619 and change for the foreseeable future so dropping down to the daily We've got to see price trending above the 50 and you can see that we've seen a lot of consolidation over the past week as things come unstuck within the eurozone and the hesitation that's caused because of all those greek issues that have been imposed on the european community so here one or two things either she's going to break below the 61.8 and close to then look for further negativity for the month of july or a continuation up break higher than the 50 percent level to then look towards that 38.2 level here at 1619 and change and between those two points there's an excess of 270 odd pips to get so there's a healthy return on time invested if and when price closes higher to give us a confirmation on to the US dollar Swiss franc here you can quite clearly see a very aggressive negative move to start 2015 then an aggressive counter move 
again through the last two months, well, January, February, March. And then we failed to see price moving on above those January highs. And so it's going to be seen price. The US dollar really dropping off over the last couple of months, in fact. Uh, and you can see here on the indicator box, very mixed. In fact, there seems to be more negativity now than positiveness. But saying that, you look at the chart and you can see we're not making new highs. There's a lot more negative sentiment on the chart in itself. So therefore, we should be looking for a continuation of that sentiment. Just looking a little closer to price, you can see that we've seen uh, a current support level being forged through May, in fact, a support, support, uh, support low, and the institution. But you can see straight away, just looking at the weekly, all the moving averages are pretty much on top of each other. And when moving averages are moving sideways instead of uh, apart from each other, it tells you that there's no clear um, trend. And what we want to do is trade trends. So here you can clearly see there's a consolidation, uh, a range, especially over since May, early May through to June. You can see that's ranging. It's trading below the price support low, resistance level, and then back and tested last week. In fact, we saw some bounce. Uh, and the week before that, we saw a, a, a move into that level. So here at 91455 is a current support, a, a strong support level. But they're also saying that above us, we also have a strong resistance at 9, sorry, the 0948 and change level. So here, what we're looking for is for price to break out of this consolidative range. Effectively, we don't like to trade consolidation. That's the last thing you want to do as a trader. You want to trade trends, strong trends, bullish or bearish. So here, rather, uh, what we want to do on this particular one on the weekly is draw a trigger level above 9486 and change or 91455 and change and wait for a clear breakout on either side to give us a, a more long-term bias of what price wants to do. And then we can really look at the chart to get us a better idea where we want to go to for the foreseeable future. Last two months being consolidative. Don't want to consolidation. Rather get out of it. We haven't seen new highs recently. So it puts more negative, it puts more em uh, emphasis on the bears. But we need to see that support low being broken here at 91455 and change before we look at any further opportunities on this particular pair. Look at the US dollar Japanese yen long term. You can see. We're looking at information now that goes way back to 97, in fact, a long time ago. You can see the bullish sentiment that's, that really moved within the US dollar uh, over the years since 2011. In fact, we've seen a lot of positive movement. And price is now trading at the highs that we saw just before the, the market tanked in 2007, in fact. So we're back towards those highs that we saw before the recession kicked in. And we're literally at those levels right now. So you likely to see consolidation as we look at that long term and if you take the current low in 2011 to the current high in 90 what was that 97 in fact you can see they were trading above that 38.2 which was a, a major uh, resistance of price over the, the the start or the end of 2014 and the start of 2015 you can see uh, november december january february march april a lot of resistance there the bias is still to the upside because price failed to pull back aggressively and the candlesticks told us we should still be looking for bias to the upside. And then last month's candle, a nice juicy breakout candle. So now we saw a lot of positive data coming in for the US market, pushing it higher, trading above the 38.2 level for the first time in one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive months. So that's a positive statement. But now we need to see price kicking on. And you can see this month of June, very indecisive as the markets are hesitant of what's happening in, within the Eurozone. Clearly, there's a lot of um, indecisiveness, a lot of hesitation to trade the, the current markets. And you can see that price has been very consolidative. So not trading higher than the um, the May month, having having said that, not closing higher as yet. So this dropping down to the weekly, we still get a bar signal uh, because everything on our weekly looks fantastic as well as our monthly. We're starting to see a bit of hesitation creeping in now on our shorter time frames. You can see over the last couple of weeks, we've not seen any new highs. And we do need to see that if we are to trade a very strong trend. In this case, positive trend. So pullbacks are good. It's still trading above the current resistance level highs with the November high, the February, March high. Now that would be our safety net. At 121735 would be our first safety net. But the 38.2 level would also be our second safety net here at 119. Continue to stay above those levels. Continue to look for US dollar strength against the yen. But we need to see new highs being created to then look to trade aggressively 
and we could look towards that 23.6 year level here at 130277 and change. So on our daily, we're looking to the start of July, uh, the non farm payroll figures, to see if it comes up with any positive data. So I'm just going to look at the data quickly to see if they've actually posted what the potential figures are. And non farm payroll falls on a Thursday this week, guys. So just make a note of that. Non farm payroll, the prior month was 280,000 jobs. They're expecting only 230,000 jobs to be created this month. So that's a contraction of 50,000 jobs, guys, which is a negative, negative um, statement for the US dollar against any of its crosses. So if that figure comes out less than 230,000, then we should see a, a sharp pullback for the US dollar. Okay, very, very important. We're also looking at the unemployment rate. Uh, they're also contracting slightly, only 0.1%. The prior figure was 5.5%. They're expecting a change of 5.2, well, a forecast of 5.4, which is only a contraction of 0.1. So slow down there again in the market, which is not really great. You want to see those unemployment figures, um, the unemployment rate dropping only slightly, which is good. We wanted to continue to keep dropping. Um, that's ideally what we want to do. But we want to be creating jobs as well. So here again, very, very important just to look to these jobs. And we've got to see if we're going to see price moving out of it. But having said that, people are going to be more vigilant on what happens within Greece to see what the outcome is there before we see any further movement on the market. So here again, just bide your time, be patient, wait for the market to clearly give us our direction, and then we can trade the outcome on that. So here, a lot of speculation, a uh, lot of hesitation on the markets, as you clearly seen on the the last, you know, the four majors I've just mentioned. Please, please, please rather be patient, okay, guys. We've got to see what happens in Greece, and I can assure you, whatever the whatever the outcome is in Greece, we will then see a move. And then what we want to do as traders, we can trade both sides of the market. We can trade short and we can trade long, but we can't trade consolidation. And if prices are consolidating, the last thing you want to do is trade consolidation because you're trading risk. You're trading indecision, which is risk. Okay, so wait patiently for a, a breakout of those consolidative ranges to then trade comfortably with market sentiment and then all you got to do is back it up with sound money management rules and you're on for a winner okay i'm gonna leave you with that i hope you have a fantastic start to the july month let's hope we get some movement soon because prices have been very very stagnant very indecisive i know you've got to be patient we have to be patient but we will be rewarded when price decides to move again so have a fantastic week keep it simple and most importantly trade serenely Thank <laughs> you.